guy. Howdy, and welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. everyone welcome back to the show tonight we have something a little bit different here some reports of a gugwe apparently encounters coming from northern alberta and before we get on with the encounters i'd like to say a special thanks to sean for sending them to me hey sean thanks man i know you probably still got some more reports if you want to share them with me i'll make sure they get put out to everybody else so they can uh, be forewarned or warned is forearmed so with that, uh, here we go. Let's get to those Gugwe reports. All right, Sean says, I received this report via email on 9-12-98. The reporting witness gave his name as Gavin. When I first received the report, I was dubious as I knew nothing of the Gugwe creature at this time. The report goes as follows, quote, Hi, my name is Gavin. I live outside of Fort McMurray on a small acreage. About two weeks ago, I heard screaming sounds outside. I opened the back door to see if I could spot anything. On a hill behind the barn, I saw a thing that I thought was Bigfoot, but it didn't look like Bigfoot are supposed to look like. It looked like the monster from Rawhead Rex, a horror movie. It walked out of sight, still making its horrible sounds. My dog seemed to be afraid for the rest of the night. And Sean says, that was it. I searched for the movie Rawhead Rex, and the creature does somewhat resemble the images of the Gugly that I have seen online. He sent me a couple of images to share, and here we go. You can take a look at those. This report, the location is near Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. The date, July 23rd, 2004. Time, early evening. Occurrence, vocalizations, and sighting on property. A man on a property west of the town of Rocky Mountain House reported that he began to hear roaring sounds in the forest that surrounded his property. He described it as the roar of a lion, but much, much louder. So loud that he not only heard them, but he felt them as well. At first, they seemed to be coming from a good distance away, but steadily became louder and louder as the maker of the sounds drew closer to his property. He said that the sounds both terrified and mesmerized him, kind of like he was having a nightmare. This made him even more fearful as he had never experienced anything like this before. He said that he decided to go outside to see if he could spot the maker of the sounds, but before he did this, he armed himself with a rifle. He didn't specify what type or caliber it was. One thing he said is that the entire time he felt a lingering sense of dread and couldn't explain why. Once he was outside, he spotted a very large bipedal creature standing on just the other side of the barbed wire fence that separated his property from Crown, which is government, 
the land. He estimated its height at nine and a half to 10 feet. But what really sent him into shock was the creature's face. His exact words were, quote, it was like somebody cut off a bear's head and plunked it onto a giant ape thing's shoulders. I've always been open to the idea of Bigfoot, but I didn't think it looked like this. This wasn't normal. It felt like it didn't belong here, or, or anywhere, for that matter, unquote. He didn't even consider the idea of shooting it. In fact, he said that he almost forgot that the rifle was in his hands. After looking at it for a short time, maybe 15 to 20 seconds, the creature made a, quote, grumbling, unquote, sound, and crashed back into the forest. He heard the roaring vocalization twice more. Both seemed to come from a further distance away showing him that the creature was moving away from his property. That was the end of the initial report. We emailed back and forth a few times, Sean says, with me trying to get as many details as I could about the creature. The physical description is as follows. Nine and a half to ten foot tall. Hair color, rust red. He estimated the creature was at least five to six feet across the shoulders. The head had a definite snout or a muzzle. He saw teeth when the creature vocalized. He said that the teeth were those of a true predator. Other than that, there isn't anything else to mention. After six email exchanges, he decided that he didn't want to talk to about it anymore. He only gave me his first name, Greg, and would not disclose any other personal details. I didn't push for anything else. I did get to meet him face to face one time at Crimson Lake Provincial Park. He didn't waver once in his report. His parting comment made me believe his report even more. When we were standing there talking, he looked at his watch and said, quote, the sun is going to start setting soon. We should get out of here, unquote. I'll try to get more reports to you soon. Work has been taking a lot of time lately, and have a good day, says Sean. Alberta Gugwe Report number three. Sean says, this one gave me the chills when I read it many years back. This shows outright maliciousness on the part of the creature. Location, outside Fort Nelson, British Columbia. Date, early August, 1990. Reported 5-12-2001. Witness stand yearly, 47 at the time of reporting. The reporting witness said that his two German shepherds began barking crazily one day while he was outside working on an old dirt bike. Normally, he would simply tell them to shut up, but he said that he had never heard them bark like this before. He knew that something was off. He began to walk towards the rear of his property, then thought twice about it. He went inside, grabbed his deer rifle, no caliber mentioned, and then proceeded towards the area where the dogs were penned up. When he arrived, he could both see and hear something large crunching through the trees and bushes surrounding his property. Thinking from the size that it was a large bull moose, he yelled at it to get lost and fired his rifle into the air one time. Whatever it was stopped moving and growled. He said that when it growled, both dogs stopped barking like someone had, quote, unplugged, unquote, them, and remained unnaturally silent. He said that he felt the growl like someone hit him with a wet wool blanket. He was now both confused and afraid. He knew that this was not a bull moose, it wasn't a bear, it wasn't a person. He immediately retreated into the house. He tried to get the dogs to go with him, but they would not move. He was awoken that night by the sounds of his dogs yelping and screaming outside. He armed himself, hit the switch for the sodium lights in the yard and ran outside onto his raised balcony. Once outside, he saw a gigantic, quote, two-legged baboon, unquote, walking toward the woods carrying one of his dogs. The other was still inside the pen area. He shot at the creature three times before it disappeared into the wood, and he was not sure if he had hit it or not. He went outside to check on his remaining dog. He was alive and uninjured, totally unresponsive. He carried her inside. He called his brother once again. Within an hour, he arrived at his home. His brother said they would go out in the morning and look for the missing dog, but that they were not going nowhere out there in the dark. In the morning, they armed up and stepped out the front door to begin their search. They spent the day searching the area and found nothing. Upon their return home, they found the head of the missing dog on the front porch of the home. 
it wasn't there when he left in the morning. His brother told him that this means that whatever killed his dog was intelligent and may have even been in the area when they were leaving earlier in the morning. His brother stayed for the rest of the week, but nothing further occurred. His remaining dog seemed to snap out of it a few days later, but was never the same animal that she had been before. He said that the two-legged baboon turned its upper body towards him as he threw open the balcony door. He said that its features momentarily stopped him dead in his tracks. It had an enormous muscular body, but the face is what got him. It had a long snout or muzzle with pointed teeth which had bared at him when they made eye contact. He said the eyes reflected yellow-green in the light from the sodium halogen lights. His first thought was, oh, I'm looking at a monster. What the hell is this thing? Then he saw that it was carrying his limp dog in one hand, just like he would carry a shopping bag. He estimated the creature was between 10 to 12 feet tall. Its coloring was midnight black. It crossed his yard, which is 70 to 80 feet, in seven or eight steps. He also said that the creature seemed to exude a feeling of dread, at least to him. Three clear footprints were found in the back area of the yard. These measured 19 inches long by 10 inches wide and were sunk about two inches deep into the semi-dry ground. The distance between prints was estimated at six and a half to seven feet. He sent me a scan of a 110 photograph, one of the prints, and I'll go through my flash drives and portable hard drive to see if I can find it. When I do, I'll send it to you. After this encounter, he had bars installed over all of his windows, replaced the sliding glass balcony doors with solid oak swinging doors, and installed motion sensor lights around the house and in the yard. And Sean says that is the most detailed report that I have on this gugwe creature. The fact that it brought the dog's head back and put it where they would find it proves to me that these things have a malicious intelligence. He says, I communicated back and forth with Stan several times. Last communication was in early winter of 2003. And again, thank you very much to Sean for sharing those reports with us. Much appreciated. If anybody out there has any reports that they think may have been a Gugwe encounter, please feel free to send it to me. My email, worldbigfootcentral at yahoo.com. So until next episode, Everybody be safe out there and you know the drill. 